CMOS low noise uh, amplifiers, uh, we can uh, usually find them at the front end of the um, RF receiver. So the low noise amplifier will be the first stage and the uh, receiver uh, making sure that uh, we have uh, enough gain and signal to noise for the um, uh, detected signal uh, to be uh, further propagated through the received channel. Uh, if we look at the design considerations, then first thing an LNA or low noise amplifier should uh, exhibit is a minimum noise figure that we can get at this uh, frequency and for the current consumption that we are allowed to, uh, to consume. Of course, it has to be uh, um, an amplifier, so the gain should be maximized uh, to, to keep the signal to noise ratio uh, in the channel. Uh, we uh, usually, uh, as we said, it's, it's the first uh, stage in the receiver, so it needs to be matched uh, into, uh, to the board, the external environment, so it's a 50 ohm match usually, or 100 ohm differential, uh, if it's a differential uh, topology. Uh, it must be st stable, otherwise it's not an amplifier, but rather uh, an oscillator and just uh, not functional, we cannot use it. If it's not stable. Uh, linearity is important uh, even though we tend to believe that you know the signals are very weak when they, uh, when they are received in the antenna. Sometimes the signal is coming from very close by and we still need to have the channel uh, linear so linearity is important. And uh, power consumption is always a constraint and size and uh, package parasitics are part of the design so uh, we must take the package parasitics into a consideration when we design and we are usually um, we have boundary conditions about the size that we can consume with this uh, specific circuit as part of the full RFIC. LNA input matching. Um, the LNA as uh, um, a low noise amplifier as the first stage uh, in the receiver has to be first considered from the input port. Uh, we mentioned uh, in the previous slide that noise figure needs to be minimized. At the same time, the LNA is connected to the antenna and we need to have a, usually a 50 ohm or 100 ohm differential uh, match uh, to have uh, minimum reflections uh, um, at the input of the RFIC. And also increase the power gain. Uh, because reflections are not good for gain. Um, so a good uh, reference uh, for um, this approach uh, can be found in the 2004 uh, microwave theory and technique uh, paper that uh, uh, we can see here. And uh, it will be a reference that I will be using in this uh, tutorial. Let's look at the uh, classic noise matching formula. Uh, to understand this uh, formula, we first need to examine the equivalent circuit of the common source transistor together with its uh, matching circuit, as we can see here. So here is the transistor, here is the matching circuit, and here is the formula for a noise figure uh, of this system. So what does this formula tell us? We have a F, a F min which is uh, the minimum noise figure possible with this transistor in the current biasing conditions. Of course, it's always uh, biasing and also frequency dependent. Um, so this will be the minimum noise figure. And then we have this uh, um, element here, which, is, which has uh, um, these factors Rn will be uh, the noise resistivity or the sensitivity of uh, this uh, circuit to, uh, to matching, let's put it this way. Uh, Gs, the normalizing factor, will be the um, conductance of the source, so it's usually 1 over Rs. And uh, then we have uh, these two uh, elements uh, squared where we have G, which is the conductance, minus the optimum conductance, which we will uh, soon uh, explain. And then we have this uh, imaginary part. We have uh, the imaginary part mi minus the um, optimum imaginary part squared. 
And so if these two elements are really uh, G equals uh, G optimum and B equals B optimum, we are just left with the F minimum. So let's talk about Y optimum. Y optimum, if we look at the circuit here, will be a, an admittance that will be the optimal admittance for this transistor uh, when we consider noise. And it will actually minimize the noise uh, if, if uh, uh, this admittance will equal to the optimum uh, admittance. If we are not at the optimum, then the noise figure will behave uh, like in this uh, formula. And of course, Y has an, a real part and an imaginary part, and these two parts are part of the equation. Now uh, we should go over the common source noise figure parameters. So first parameter is uh, Rn. It is uh, pointed here as zero because later on we will uh, uh, change it a little bit. And it is equal to uh, A1 over uh, Gm. Uh, A1 is not really a constant, but it's, it's a factor uh, that depends on the bias uh, condition and the transistor chosen. And uh, it is reverse proportional to transistor width because Gm uh, is proportional to transistor width. And that, that's why uh, this equation tells us that if we want to have Rn uh, minimized, uh, we can choose wider transistors. Then uh, Y optimum, which is the optimal uh, um, uh, impedance for noise uh, performance, will be uh, A2 omega uh, CGS, which is the uh, transistor um, input capacitance, minus JA3 omega uh, CGS. So CGS is also proportional to transistor width. So Y optimum uh, has linear proportion to transistor width and A2 and A3 are also uh, depends on, depending on the bias conditions and transistor uh, chosen. And F minimum, which is the minimum noise figure we can get from this transistor at this frequency and with these bias conditions will be one plus A4 omega, which is the operating frequency normalized by omega T, uh, which is uh, two pi times the uh, transition frequency, as uh, was described before. So F minimum uh, is always more than one. We cannot uh, have uh, a better uh, noise figure than one. This is the, um, the ideal noise figure. And uh, these are um, the noise parameters that we saw before. Now, the problem is that we see that Y optimum has an imagine, imaginary part while the input impedance with common source is just the uh, input capacitance CGS. And uh, these two impedance, uh, these two admittances are, are different in, in a way that Y optimum has a real part, while Y in has only an imaginary part. Hence, we cannot conjugate match them. And that means that if we just go with this topology, we may be able to optimize the noise, but the input impedance uh, will be uh, will be off because Y in has no uh, real part and that's why we will have reflection between uh, the LNA and the antenna which is not good uh, for performance or for gain. We now understand that a simple uh, classic common source cannot satisfy both a minimum noise figure and um, um, Z in uh, or input uh, impedance uh, matching. Uh, so we need to change the topology. And uh, uh, if we need to change, to change the topology, one uh, very uh, common uh, topology will be adding uh, LS or a source uh, inductor uh, to the topology in a way that we may show later on uh, may enable uh, simultaneous a noise and input matching. So this LS, as, uh, as noted here, will be the degeneration inductor, as you can find in the literature, and we will soon find how it can help us in the design of LNAs. So uh, we add a source inductor to the common source topology. And uh, now we need to, to uh, check what happens to the noise parameters that we examined before. So uh, it can be shown, and uh, you can use the reference um, to check that. 
that Rn uh, uh, equals Rn0 and actually doesn't change when we introduce uh, the generation inductor, which is very good because now we understand that the sensitivity of uh, um, the topology to um, uh, distance from optimal uh, matching, noise matching, uh, is not degraded. Uh, if we look at Z-optimum, we will find that Z-optimum equals to the Z-optimum uh, 0, which is 1 over Y-optimum 0, we saw before. But it is shifted by the factor of uh, J omega LS, uh, which is a shift, but maybe we can live with it. Okay, so the, the optimal impedance is shifted. Uh, we can probably uh, tune for that. And uh, going back to F minimum, we find that F minimum was also not changed by introducing the uh, LS inductor, uh, which is good news because we did not degrade anything. We just need to look for a different optimal point uh, to match the circuit. So uh, this is quite encouraging. We just need now to, to um, uh, express Z optimum which we use now here, instead of Y optimum, uh, we can uh, do it here uh, by multiplying um, multiplying in the uh, conjugate. And uh, uh, we will soon see uh, how we, uh, we uh, continue to develop this simultaneous noise idea, noise impedance idea. So uh, calculating uh, input impedance for a LD generated common source uh, will be uh, employing simple Kirchhoff laws. Uh, basically, what we want to do, we want to calculate the input impedance at this uh, plane. So what we do, we find uh, input voltage divided by input current and we find Z in. Very simple. And if we do that, we follow these uh, uh, simple steps. We find that Z in uh, will equal uh, GM LS over CGS plus J omega L minus uh, 1 over omega CGS, which is nice because now this topology, as we wanted it to, to be, has both real part and an imaginary part. So if we have, uh, um, if we have a Y optimum with real and imaginary, we may be able to uh, achieve simultaneous impedance and noise match. The acronym for a simultaneous noise input match is uh, SNIM, and uh, you can find it also in the literature, especially in this uh, reference that uh, we saw before. And now we can uh, see uh, if it's really possible to match Z in with uh, Z optimum. Um, to get both noise matching, optimal noise matching, and input matching. So if we want uh, impedance matching, we need to make sure that Z optimum, the optimal uh, noise match, will equal uh, the conjugate match of Z in. Okay? And uh, that means that we can uh, um, see Z in conjugate here. We just uh, changed the uh, sign here between these two uh, terms the real doesn't change and then z optimum uh, was found before and it is now shifted by uh, j omega ls and uh, we just need to equate uh, these two um, to to have both uh, noise and input match or simultaneous match so if we look at the two uh, equations, we find that they both have this uh, omega ls uh, term, which is nice. Uh, they both have uh, a CGS uh, reverse proportion at the real part, uh, but there's still some differences. Uh, this part has this uh, A2 over uh, A1, uh, A2 squared plus A3 squared. Uh, which is not in the first one, and then we have uh, here another term that does not appear uh, in Z in uh, uh, conjugate. But uh, miraculously, 
uh, and with uh, uh, modern technologies, uh, we can uh, make this term right here. We can uh, not make, but but actually, technology makes it uh, very close to one. So it really makes uh, the one over CGS here and this term very very close, which is nice. And by choosing the right transistor size and uh, um, bias conditions, we can make the two reels uh, very close or similar. So really, if we have no uh, power limitations or other limitations, theoretically, we can approach a perfect SNIM. But uh, in reality, it's just uh, uh, good enough to reach reasonable uh, simultaneous uh, uh, matching. And uh, that's what, what we do. We always uh, or usually prefer to, to, to match the noise as good as possible and just to have the uh, impedance matched uh, to an acceptable level. And, uh, and this is all um, happens because we add this LS uh, inductor.